Hello, Matthews Gatos here. Welcome to Applying Exponent Laws. Let's get started. I want to play a little game with you called That Was Then with Integers and This Is Now with Variables. That was then when we multiplied 4 exponent 3 times 4 squared. We expanded 4 cubed meaning 4 multiplied by itself 3 times. We expanded 4 squared, and then we grouped it all together. There are 5 repeated factors of 4, so I can say that my final answer is 4 exponent 5. Well, how do I go from start to finish without all the expanding? Well, simply I keep my base the same, and I add the exponents. 3 plus 2 gives me an exponent of 5. This was called the product law. So a to the m times a to the n is a to the m plus m. Keep the base, add the exponents. Because it is called the product law, we are multiplying, and multiplying makes things bigger. That's why we are adding the exponents. Well, this is now with variables. Multiplying these powers with the same base, I keep the base the same, and I add my exponents. So that becomes x exponent nine. That was then when we would divide negative 5 exponent 7 by negative 5 exponent 3. So again, I'm going to expand that out. 7 repeated factors of negative 5 in the numerator, 3 repeated factors of negative 5 in the denominator. I always look to see what I can cancel, and I can cancel 3 factors to the top and the bottom. I'm left with 5 repeated factors of x, or sorry, of negative 5. So writing that as one exponent, I have negative 5 exponent 4. Notice how I keep my base in brackets because I want to emphasize the base is negative 5, not the whole power. So how do I go from start to finish? Well, simply keep the base the same and subtract the exponents. This is the quotient law. So quotient law says when we're dividing powers with the same base, keep the base the same, and subtract the exponents. Well, it's called quotient law because we're dividing, and division tends to make things smaller. That's why we subtract the exponents. Well, this is now. We have some variables. So I'm going to keep my base the same, e, and subtract my exponents. So e to the exponent of 10 take away 4 is 6. Now I have to note, because I have a variable, not a number in the denominator, I want to make sure I'm not dividing by 0, so I'm just going to state this is true as long as e is not 0. That was then when we would take 2 exponent 3 and divide it by another 2 exponent 3. Let's look at expanding that. That would be 2 cubed is 2 times 2 times 2, also divided by 2 times 2 times 2. Well, those all cancel, and I'm just left with 1. Let's look at that from a different perspective, however. Let's look at it from quotient law. So quotient law would tell me, keep the base the same, and subtract the exponents. And then I would get 2 exponent 0. Well, if I get 2 exponent 0 as an exponent, and I get 1 as a number, I therefore know that 2 exponent 0 is the same as 1. This is the zero exponent law, a special case of the quotient law. So a to the exponent of zero equals one for any non-zero base. It will always be one. Well, this is now with variables. b to the exponent of zero is also equal to one provided that b is not zero. So it's true for any non-zero base. That was then when we took nine squared and we cubed it. We would expand 9 squared, which is 9 times 9, and we would multiply it by itself three times. I have a whole bunch of repeated factors of 9, so altogether there are six of them, so my final answer would be 9 exponent 6. Well, what's the way of going from start to finish? Without expanding, I simply keep my base the same and multiply the exponents. This is called the power of power law. So you keep the base the same, you multiply the exponents. Well, this is now with variables, so I can apply that to this question here too. x exponent 8 to the exponent of 5. 
I keep the base the same and I multiply my exponents together. So x to the exponent of 40. Well, that was then when I would take 3 times 2 and raise it to the exponent of 3. Now I know I could do 3 times 2 is 6, but I'm not going to. I'm going to simplify this or expand this using repeated factors. So 3 times 2 to the exponent of 3 means I'm going to take 3 times 2 and multiply it by itself 3 times. I'm just going to rearrange that where I'm going to put all the 3's together and all the 2's together to look like that. So I can see I have 3 repeated factors of 3 and 3 repeated factors of 2, so I can end by saying it's 3 cubed multiplied by 2 cubed. Well, how can I go from the question straight to the answer start to finish? I simply just apply the exponent of 3 to the 3 and the 2. This is called power of product law. So anytime you have a product, which means multiply, a times b to the m, you apply the exponent to each factor and multiply. So I think of this, the tip, as applying the distributive property. It's kind of like that, where you apply it to both factors in the base. Well, this is now using variables. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to apply the 4 to each of my variables. So it will be x exponent 4 multiplied by y exponent 4. Well, that was then when we took 4 over 5 and raised it to an exponent of 4. Again, I'm going to take my base and multiply it by itself 4 times. 4 times 4 times 4 times 4 over 5 times 5 times 5 times 5. Let's collect them all together. So it's 4 factors of 4 over 5 factors, sorry, 4 factors of 5, which is 4 exponent 4 over 5 exponent 4. So how do we go from start to finish without expanding? Well, again, I just apply the exponent to the numerator and the denominator. This is called power of quotient law. So a over b to the exponent of m is just a to the m divided by b to the m. So I apply the exponent to each factor and divide. My tip again is just to think of this like the distributive property. So this is now, let's look at exponents. I want to simplify this by applying it to top and bottom. So I have p exponent 4 over q exponent 4. And I will say q can't be 0 because I can't divide by 0. So this would be true for all values of p and q except when q is 0. This is new. We learned this this year. Fractional exponents. Let's look at this. So if I have 8 to the exponent of 4 over 3, well, I know that my bottom number is the root that I'm going to take of the base. So I'm going to take the cube root of 8. The exponent is the numerator. That tells me I'm going to take that and raise it to the exponent of 4. This is called the fractional exponent. So anytime you have a to the m over n, m is the root, denominator is the root, numerator is the exponent. Well, if this is new, this is newer because we're applying it with a variable base. So again, top is your exponent, bottom is your root. So I'm going to take the seventh root of x and I will raise it to the exponent of 5. Or I can just say the seventh root of x exponent 5. Both of these are equivalent because 5 is the exponent. Also new this year was the negative exponent. So if I had 2 over 5 to the exponent of negative 2, I would take the reciprocal of the base, 5 over 2, and raise it to the positive exponent, raise it to the 2. This is the negative exponent law. So if you have a to the negative n, take the reciprocal of the base, 1 over a, and raise it to the positive n. So taking the reciprocal of the base changes the exponent from negative to positive. Well, if this is new, this is newer because I have a variable now. So same rules apply. Take the reciprocal of the base and raise it to the positive exponent. As a little note, since I have x in the denominator, remember I'm not allowed to divide by 0. So this is true for all values of x except for 0. So this was a nice little, that was 
then this is now game about exponents. I have a question. If they are exponents, why did they quit being ponents? I don't know. But I do know if you liked this video, you should give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe. It helps me reach more Mathies in need of help. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you for the next one.